Hello and happy holidays! Happy holidays, Carol! Happy holidays, Mia! And happy holidays, Paprika! That's right! This is the special holiday edition of Reef Ride Scenes, where we are going to talk about little women. All four of them! All right? four of them, yep. All four of the little women's is. <laughs> That's a lot of women's. That's a lot of women's. So, um... Let's get things. Let's just jump right into it and get things started. Yeah, it's my turn to go through the rundown. Yeah. So um, we start off in season one in Atlanta, um, where they still are today. What? Wait, what? <laughs> what? What did you watch? Little Women of Atlanta. <laughs> no, Little Women, like Louisa May Alcott. Oh my God! What oh. are you seeing? <laughs> Damn! <laughs> I watched all those seasons for nothing. I I hope you got some benefit out of it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, it scares me that there's a Little Women of Atlanta. Oh my show. gosh! I never even heard of it until I searched Little Women, and that's that popped up before the movie, before the the, the actual movies of Little Women. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so. but uh, rest assured, I I checked with Carol. And confirmed. <laughs> I mean, sure, no, they're not all little people. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we watched... Oh, goodness. Now okay. I forget the years. Is it okay, 1939? 1939. 39. Yeah. And then 45? 54. 54. I it's, it, inverted. It's either 54 or 45. Let me check. I, I may have inverted it. But, um, yeah, I know the first one was 39. The second one is is forty nine. So, oh gosh, okay, I was totally wrong. The first one is thirty three. The second one is forty nine. So that's where I was getting the nine. And then ninety four. Yes, and, and then twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. So let's start with the nineteen thirty three version. Well, I'll I'll do the rundown for yeah, really the I first mean, the first three. Most most of the four, yeah, too. There's very little. The fourth one makes changes, but the yeah. generalized story is basically the same, right? And it's based off a book, so mm-hmm. so it's all it all hits the the major points. We meet the um, the March girls uh, in. I think they're in upstate New York. They're actually in Concord. Concord. Well, they don't actually name the town. It's, they do it, in the in the new one. They do. Yeah, um, it's Concord, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah. They're somewhere cold. Yeah. In the Americas. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere cold, and um, their father is not around. He's sent away. He's uh, a soldier at the Union Army, um, and they're having to make ends meet. The book calls it genteel poverty. Genteel they're obviously poverty. not. Poor. They're not poor, poor. But they don't want anybody to know that their money is dwindling. Is, is dwindling. But they still have a housekeeper. It, it's, it, yeah, it's it's not like, you meet poor people in this story, and the marches aren't there yet. <laughs> right, they're not there yet. But they, Meg especially, has a keeping up with the Joneses thing, yes. and... And obviously, they're get, they're getting an education. They're cared for. Mm-hmm. They have a doctor, you know. So you've got Marmy watching over everybody. You've got um, Joe is pretty much the one, the main focus of the mm-hmm. stories. Everything sort of hinges off of her perspective of how things go. Um, and she's the writer amongst the sisters. You have Amy... You have Beth and Meg, mm. um, and then you you soon meet um, the neighbor. What's his first name? His Teddy name is- Theodore. Theodore. Theodore Lawrence, <coughs> aka Lori, aka Teddy or Lori, uh, and he's he's there. He's got some money, but he's not. Um, He's not, like, a successful man by culture standards at the time. He's, um, it's explained in the two later versions that his father was disowned. His father was, because he's living with his grandpa, and his father was that man's son who ran off with an Italian opera singer and was disowned. 
but they both died, so Lori had to come home and his grandfather took him in. So he has he has kind of an artist flair. He does. He has an artist flair. Mm-hmm. And Joe is really drawn to that, and they become fast friends. And Joe's more of a rough-and-tumble type of a, a kid anyway. Mm-hmm. So they, um, they form a close friendship, and they're pretty much inseparable their childhood. Um, Beth gets scarlet fever. Uh, there's some touching moments, and that's how kind of everybody gets their priorities straight with um, what they want to do with their life. And uh, she eventually passes. Um, Meg is the more... Vain she's, sister. She's she, also described as beautiful, so she kind of knows it. <laughs> looks and money are her priority, so she's focused on finding a partner, getting married quickly, and her beauty. Yeah. And, and not letting the lack of finances or the dwindling money stop her from enjoying anything. Yeah, but then she she eventually marries. A tutor. Yeah. Because With no money. <laughs> because in my opinion, like, Beth's death changed her into what, you know, to realize what she really needs. What she really wanted, yeah. Um, let's see, what else? Lori asks Joe to marry him, and she refuses. Yes, she refuses, saying that they... They cannot go a day without quarreling. She can't love him the way that he loves her. And, you know, it it is touching because they have such a strong friendship and things would be a lot easier if she could marry him. He's got the money. Yeah. They know each other. He would let her do her writing. You know. Yeah. But she just can't love him. And she views him as a brother. Yeah. Um, so that, that's very sad. And he goes off to Europe. And then, coincidentally, the old spinster of the family. Great Aunt March. Um, decides that she wants to go to Europe and she wants to sponsor Amy's getting an artistic education in Europe. So she's Mm -hmm. taking Amy there. Um, And Amy and Lori come home from Europe married. Yeah. So there's Joe has some mixed feelings about that, but she's ultimately okay with that because she knows she knows they'll be happier. Yeah. It would her and Lori would be, it wouldn't have been fair to Lori to just accept that proposal. And it just so happens she's met a very convenient German professor in New York. <laughs> Who was played with an Italian accent in how many of the movies? All four? Well, um, okay, so he's played by an Italian in the, in the fourth one. Gabriel Byrne does his best to try a German accent, but he's so Irish. He's it came Irish. Off. I don't know where the heck his accent was from. And then I have totally forgotten the other two, the older two. It, Italian. <laughs> but or, or like I actually, in the first one, it was like a general European, European accent. It was so funny. And then the second one, they actually cast an Italian. Right. So yeah. So two of the four German professors were played by Italians, I believe. <laughs> but yeah, none of them were played by Germans. None of them were played by Germans. <laughs> <laughs> and he does not have a lot of money, but he helps her with his with her writing, and he. Takes her to the opera. Yeah, he gives her a very harsh critique because she's writing um, like horror stories, but they're selling For the newspaper. Yeah, but they're selling. So, shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I disagree. I think that he was in the right. To he was tell in the right her. to tell her that, but at the same time, it comes across. Well, we'll get into it in the different versions, but um, to me, it was like you can criticize her, but don't tell her to just. Throw out the only income she has right now. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, in today's day and age, would be like, 
It's yo, do it on the side. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like until your bills are paid full time by this. I know you want to write the great American novel, but right now the electricity is being paid for by this YA vampire romance. <laughs> so, <laughs> so can you keep writing the vampire romance? <laughs> Um. So yeah, that was that's yeah. <coughs> oh, and then it ends with they're all back home. Uh, the Lori, Lori, and Amy are back home from for Christmas. Um, Joe uh, comes Megan, back. John, or yeah, you because know, she marries John Brooke, the, Lori's tutor. Yeah, they're back for Christmas. Joe, <laughs> your your cats. Let really... me check the cabinets. <laughs> they're trying to get into the cabinets, and all we hear is this ghostly slamming of doors. <laughs> like Becky's here, what and she doing? wants to say something. Stop. Stop it. You do not need to get in there. You're not a baby. Stop. 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 You're not a baking dish. Okay, so there's a reason why I have baby locks on my cabinets, and it's not because I have babies. Okay, where were we? Oh, yeah. Everyone was married happily ever after, except for Beth, who died. Yep. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, the, the, the author comes by the Italian, the German, <laughs> Gabriel Byrne, whatever we're calling him. He comes by, um, brings her her book published as a gift, but leaves it with, depending on he, the version, he missed somebody, his, his, somebody in, else in the family. He mistakenly thinks that she is married, Lori, because somebody tells them that. Mr. Because Lori's there, and he's yeah, never heard he's, his name yeah. in that context. That yeah. yeah. So he leaves, and she. There's a very heroic scene where she chases him down, <laughs> and then we know that every everybody just lives happily ever. After. Yeah, and Anne March leaves her, leaves Joe her house, which Joe. In the novel, and in I think well all of the books, or all of the movies, turns into a school, and then you get the the sequel to Little Women, which was Little Men. I really like that she bought a school with yeah. that money. Yeah. So, and that's basically the story. This is you know mostly like episodic adventures, kind of. It's like it has that very. 1860s quality of having and this happened and this happened each chapter is a little problem that is solved and it yeah. goes on and then like you have a few the, years of time yeah yeah um and then you have the tragedy of beth kind of woven into it because beth is a very shy and withdrawn girl and doesn't open up to anybody except the neighbor who has a piano so oh yeah um yeah so let's get into the actual movies here okay starting with 1933 where Joe is played by Katherine Hepburn. <laughs> I usually um, love Katherine Hepburn. When, I, you know, you ever watch a movie and you're like, oh, this is the one that she decided she was going for best actress. I, I think she was. You I know, don't think she won it. But that's, oh. the, the, that's the impression that this watching is, this today gives you. This is the most melodramatic one. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and I really... I normally love Katherine Hepburn, but I disliked her Joe. Um, I very much disliked her Joe. The, there's a moment after Beth dies where everyone comes home, and she's she goes into the hallway, and then it was the big Oscar moment. She, like, reaches to the heavens and goes, Oh, Bethy, it's so grand when we're all together. And I'm like, oh, oh, that's just... cringy. It was so cringy. Um... Th- and these these girls may be you know genteel poverty, but they're wearing very very expensive dresses. Very, that's what got me. Not only were their dresses expensive, but when they were doing the plays and play, yeah, like, playing just together, elaborate they had costumes, the wigs. Yeah, they had gowns like corseted gowns. And I'm I'm like, like okay. when I play dress up with my friends. You know, we use You're robes making, and yeah, you use men, the men's clothes that's sitting in the closet. You right. mean, yeah, it's there's no poverty here except people say that they're poor. Um, you don't see it at all. And then um, Lori, I, Lori was so bland in this movie. I can't even remember who played him. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me. This is the first one also where they switch Beth and Amy in the ages because in the book it's Meg is the oldest 
Um, she's 16 at the start. Joe is 15. A, uh, Beth is 13, and then Amy is 12. Amy, yeah, Amy is the youngest. Um, and the book spans 10 years. Uh, so in order to make it a little bit easier to cast Amy, who's supposed to age 10 years, starting at 12, they f- usually flip Beth and Amy, and Beth is the youngest. And then Amy can be a little bit older. Right. Um, and then for the first two, they cast like a big child actor in the role of Beth to get that great death scene. So, cause like in the 33 version, it's, it's, I, her name was Frances D. Um, and boy, someone was doing her eyebrows. The everything, <laughs> everything about this movie is, is everything drama. about this movie is drama and kind of luxurious. Drama, and like, drama, drama. Uh, the the set is overdone. <laughs> the acting is, is overdone. overdone. The wardrobe is overdone. The music is the overdone. Is so treacly. It's just uh, this one was a very grating one. <laughs> I love the book, but I do love the book. This too. movie, uh, no, I didn't like this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on to 1949. Um, and, oh, and it's not June Allison. Who is it that plays... Um, is it not Elizabeth Taylor? Elizabeth Taylor plays Amy in this one. But Joe is played by... It is June Allison. June Allison plays Joe. And uh, Elizabeth Taylor plays Amy. Janet Lee. Jamie Lee Curtis's mom actually plays Meg. I didn't know that was her. Yeah. You oh, can cool. kind of see it in some scenes. It's like, oh, that's Marion Crane. Yeah. There she is. I gotta watch that again. But, um, yeah, this is, what, 20 years before Psycho? This uh, was 49. And, 40, no. Yeah. Psycho was 60. So, so 11, 11 years, years. 11 years before Psycho. Um, but, yeah. So, every... Every uh, daughter here is played by somebody big. You have Janet Lee, June Allison, Elizabeth Taylor, and then Margaret O'Brien plays Beth, um, who was a huge child actor at the time. Yeah. You could definitely, watching these movies, you could see who was popular yeah. at the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and this, I think, tells almost exactly the same story as the first one, only it's a little less... Joe is more scrappy and less melodramatic. Right. She is more scrappy. You actually believe it's, she's a tomboy. It's 12 or 13 years later, release time. Yeah. It's so, in color. So there's just, you know, 12 or 13 years of feminist movement yeah. forward. So we're able to talk about wishing we were a boy, able to help. Or, yeah, wishing I could war. go to war with dad. Um, or wishing... As a woman, I wasn't expected to care about things like yeah. my hair or, or how much getting I married spent on this or gown. who I'm going to marry. Or when I get married. Yeah. And um, so there's movement here. And I do like June Allison as Joe. I couldn't stand Elizabeth Taylor as Amy, though. Again, she was is, terrible. She was overacting. This, overacting. This, this is an music. actress I normally kind of like. Well, her later work, but... Here, it's just, oh my god, I hated Amy in this one. <laughs> I, she might have been directed poorly, because she was very stiff. Yeah. And that is not She's very stiff, Taylor. and she talks like this the entire movie. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's and she, grating. It's like somebody said, be the bratty kid. Yeah. And that's not exactly how that character comes across in the book. No. Sometimes, I mean, sure. Amy's vain, and she wants... She's the youngest one, so she is less mature well, than the others, and that's... Yeah, she's the youngest one. She's also, in the book, she's blonde hair and blue-eyed, which is somewhat different than the other girls. So she's got the more dainty features, and I think in the book, and this comes across a lot in the, the later two movies, she knows she's expected to marry well, and she wants to marry well. She doesn't want to marry a tutor or... A penniless an artist, per, you know, artist or a penniless professor. She's going to, she is going to marry money, and she's okay with that because she knows she can't make it herself. That's it's, <laughs> yeah, <a> shiver. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but yeah, Elizabeth Taylor plays Amy, and this is my least favorite version of Amy. I just, I didn't what about like the, the Lori. The Lori was Peter Lawford. 
Um, at least he's not drunk. Seriously, <laughs> that man. Almost every other movie I have seen him in, it's obvious he's drunk on screen. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> he's oh he uh, he uh, pretty much drank himself to death. But, oh, um, poor guy. He was a. Uh, Related to the Kennedys. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I think he, he married into the Kennedys or something like that. But, uh, yeah, Peter Lawford is Laurie. I didn't mind him so much. There's an earnestness to this movie that comes across in just about all of the performances. I think he had a, a good on-screen chemistry with Joe. Yeah. But not with Amy. No. No. So when, in this version... I didn't buy when, Lori and Amy when, at all. <laughs> when Lori and Amy decide to get them together, it's just like, no. Wait, nah, Lori's settling. Nah, Lori's settling for the sister. <laughs> nah, Amy's settling for, for what for the she can next get. Door. Nah, so. no. Nah, didn't buy it. Yeah, so this one, this one, this one was fine. Um, I hate the fact that they reused the entire soundtrack of the 33 version because I hated that music. Yeah, boy, oh boy, that and was terrible. I will say at the beginning of this one, there is a glorious snowman. Oh my god. <laughs> The snowman is, is obviously uh, uh, plastic. That's, that's been <laughs> built there with paper mache and sitting <laughs> sitting in that spot for ten years before they <laughs> before they filmed before they actually filmed the it. snow was slowly turning I mean, yellow with age. Wow, yes. wow. I, I wow. was wondering how they were filming this because it's obvious that most of it's a soundstage. But those houses are real because she's throwing snow. Joe's throwing I, snowballs. I feel like they're like like Universal Studios houses where, where the where facade literally... the facade is built, <laughs> and then but the other three yeah. balls are not there. Man, because this I mean it's obviously a soundstage movie. Um, there's very little of it. Uh, this this is the movie. No, it doesn't. It's, it's they don't get to it because they're in the book. There's a rift between Amy and Joe when they're younger, and they leave it out of the first two versions of this um, and probably in an effort to show all of the girls just almost angelic in their love for each other mm-hmm. um, so yeah they, they kind of leave off some of the strife in these two movies and make the March's life look a little more pleasant than it actually was so I, but, and I feel like in, in the 49 version that that would have been the time to yeah to show, to, to show that yeah because you show them giving up like there's a there's a very poor family that lives down the road from them the Hummels which is a widow and six kids wow. and um, Christmas morning the girls bring their breakfast because their breakfast is their basically their gift because they don't have a whole lot of money for gifts so mm-hmm. it's just this Hannah their housekeeper makes this really great big breakfast and they decide to bring it to the Hummels. Um, so that's, and that's, that's a nice, in the 49 version, that's where Joe meets Lori because she, she right. hits him with a popover right. um, or she drops it in front of him or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of a, a nice meeting. Um, yeah. They, it is much nicer to me than, oh, there's a man. There's a, yeah, there's all a, of a sudden we have to oh, like I straighten to, up our, yeah. our posture and. I have to say that Lori always comes across as a little bit creepy because at least in the first three vision versions of the movies or the first three versions, he's basically spying on them. See, I feel like Amy comes off as the creeper. <laughs> she, well, yeah, but Lori's like looking at them through windows. Just it's kind of weird. At least he's not like 45. He's not trying he's, to peer he's their into age. their windows. It's just kind of like, I hear a commotion over there. So They're gets- always making noise. Let me see what the March sisters are up to by peering out of my window, but not necessarily trying to Mama's, spy. Yeah, not, yeah, but I don't know. A little bit. To, but to me, Amy is always Amy is, like, yeah. lurking behind Joe and, and Lori. And she's kind of horny in this one, but <laughs> that, that may just be because it's Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> so this one I don't mind this version I wish the music was different oh my god <laughs> but my cat left yeah. the room in both movies it's like enough it's just it's just not yeah it's that sickly treacly 1930s 1940s soundtrack big brass <laughs> too much brass this is be- way before John Williams <laughs> All right, so the next one, 94. Yep. 
Down, which I remember seeing this in the theater. Uh, so I must Same have been here. 13 when I saw it. Right there. Right there in the March Sister age. And um, I had read the book. So I loved it when I watched it then. Um, it's been a it, while. I can't really say how this is different other than... They, they add a few things. They add the rift between Joe and Amy. Because Amy, in a fit... Um, burns one of Joe's manuscripts because oh, right. she can't go to the theater. Mm-hmm. And and then she falls through the ice because Joe won't talk to her after that and she follows Lo- Amy or Lori and Joe out onto the ice and falls through and then, oh my god, I'm so sorry, my poor Amy. Right. How could I be mad at you? You can be mad at her because she burns your manuscript. That is perfectly fine. That was a fucking bad move. Yeah. It doesn't mean you wanted her to, <laughs> to drown to die, in the but ice. It, it, the, watching this as a middle-aged woman is different than watching it, you know, yes. as an early 20s when I first saw it. That's what I was going to say. It, and then this happens all the time with children's literature in me. Because um, I was watching Little House on the Prairie, and I'm, that's one of my, like, favorite shows growing up. And I'm watching it going, this is fucked up. Yeah. And now I'm watching some of these older movies, these 90s movies like this one, and I'm like, oh, why did I not notice that before? Um, yeah. And there's some... Of that here. The fact that Gabriel Byrne is so much older than so much than Winona Ryder. <laughs> um, that and then I'm thinking back, I'm like, well, wait a minute. Right. He was kind of old in the forty nine version too. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that that made me like, well, okay, <clears throat> there's a sizable age difference there. Um just, the, the voiceover. The voiceover. I'm a fan, but that's that was very popular in the '90s. Yeah, to have a voiceover in your movie, I didn't care for it, and I not only that, I did not like how Winona Ryder, who was doing the voiceover, because she's Joe, yeah, and because she's the main character, Joe, she talks with a bit of a pout the yeah. entire time. Yeah, it's. Just a little bit like, come on, Joe, where is your actual feminism, not your fake feminism? She's trying like it's to... Ju- it's just too much. I think Winona Ryder was trying to sound serious. She was trying to sound a little British, I think. In, yeah. She was mistaking a British accent for a, a Connecticut accent. <laughs> um, <laughs> not that I... It's a bit weird. Not that I dislike her as yeah, Joe. Absolutely not. Um, and here is the... Okay, We're, we differ in opinion here because I actually like the fact that they cast two actresses as Amy. Because Amy ages so dramatically in the book, she starts off as 12 and come, and then ends at 22. It's difficult for a 20-something-year-old actress to pull off 12. And that was yeah. part... I think that's why they flipped the ages in the first two movies yeah, so Amy could be older. Right. Um... Here she is the youngest, and she's played by. Unfortunately, she's played by Kristen Durst as a young Durst. How do you pronounce her last name? Kristen Dunst. There, Kristen Dunst as young Amy, and then Samantha Mathis as <laughs> God. I had to pull her name out of my um, Samantha Mathis as older Amy, and Samantha Mathis, Mathis is not a good actress. <laughs> I'm sorry. No redeeming qualities listed there. <laughs> You're right. She's not. Um, and you have she this was kinda... very. She was the one in the movie that was pretending to be on set of a movie. Yeah. When everybody else was acting around her. And you had this and really kind has... of good performance by Kirsten Dunst, and and yeah. it's like you're following up with this really bland. And then and then Claire Danes as Beth, and you just know at the time, even back then, you knew oh Claire Danes this is going to be a tearjerker. Yeah, I will say Claire Danes is my favorite Beth. Yeah, and it's the only time in all four movies that I actually felt like crying when Beth died. They and really it, pushed for it. They pushed for it. And Claire Danes does a good job with the material. Yes. Uh, Beth is kind of a tough character because uh, Margaret O'Brien played her like she played every young child in, in the movies. She's just so sweet. Oh, please, sir, may I play your piano? I care very much. It's it just it's a very 40s child 
performance. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the whole character of Beth, it, she's written to die. Yeah. So, like... And, and at least there's with, not a lot of depth of character. No, and at least with Claire Danes, you get that moment where she's like, "I never envisioned myself leaving home," and it's like, okay, so I could get why she she's like in that bubble for the whole play, thing, right? But, right. Um, but yeah, Claire Danes was the only time I actually felt something when Beth died. Yep. Um, Did it affect you in the book? It did in the book. Yeah. Um, and it's the catalyst for Joe changing her writing style, and because she writes, um, what is technically Little Women, <laughs> um, right? But uh, mostly about you know her sisters, and and it's so it, it's it's a catalyst for everybody being changed. And yeah, I think Claire Danes did the best job with it. Yeah, However, I, I don't like Christian Bale's Lori. I, I didn't have a problem with that, but I do want to address. The casting of different actresses mm-hmm. at yeah. different ages. I just prefer it to cast the same actress because it takes me out of the movie when I see a new face. If they're going and I, to do that? I see your point. They, yeah. they look like a 22-year-old playing a 12-year-old when they have to do that in those scenes. It's just something I can subside. Yeah, if they're going to do that, I wish they, they do what the, the first two movies did and just flip Beth and Amy. Mm-hmm. And then write Amy as a little bit more mature at the beginning. Because my problem with every performance except for that 94 version is that you have this adult actress going, Teacher struck me for my limes. And I'm like, what? <laughs> she, she's, they don't change her dialogue at all. Right. So she's talking like a 12 year old and she's obviously 20. <laughs> so that's what. It's like, if you're not going to flip the ages... It, but it, I have a problem with them flipping the ages because they didn't rewrite Amy to be any older. Beth still sounds older, dialogue-wise, in those first two versions because they didn't change anything from how yeah. they speak in the book. I, yeah, but it could be a maturity level thing, too. Yeah, because Amy's immature. Right. Until she... In know, a family of four sisters... The least mature one may not necessarily be the youngest. So, yeah, I just... I preferred the two actresses. I just wish they had gotten a better quality actress for older Amy. <laughs> for sure. Oh, that's like, trash. For and... sure. No, but, like, what is she doing now? There's nobody... Nobody can can really debate that. I don't, yeah. I don't even think she's on she Little Women She was supposed to be the next big thing, and she wasn't. Right, right. That being said, I do love uh, Susan Sarandon as Marmy. Um, I can't even remember who played Marmy in the first two, <laughs> but she was to me. She she was a good Marmy when I watch it now, but back then, I was like, this isn't how Marmy is in the book. She's she she comes across as rather strict, kind of. Well, she's got a Susan Sarandon way of talking. She's very clipper. She's, yeah, yeah, and so, then matter of fact, and like, yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, they added things for this version. Um, you get the whole thing with Beth or, or with Meg going to the rich people's house for a cotillion, <laughs> and they basically humiliate her because she's poor. Excuse me, with the yeah, oh that, oh yeah, when the curling when, iron and <laughs> burning her hair. Out. That is in all four versions. Yeah, uh, Joe burning Meg's hair off with a curling iron, and I'm like, well, that's what happens when you put metal into fire and then put it on your head. It was curling irons back yep. in the day, man. Women did weird shit to their hair. Um, so that's the 94 version. Yeah, well, you were going to say you didn't like the Christian Bale as Lori. Oh, <clears throat> I like half of his performance. <laughs> I like it when they're, you know, doing the play, you know, doing Joe's plays at the houses and they just meet. I don't like Lori in Europe because yeah. he comes across as predatory. Well, <clears throat> in those scenes, when he's opposite Amy, I'm just like, she is giving him nothing she, to you, act off And of. he's overcompensating yes. and it's coming across as creepy. Yes. So and that's, that's how I and feel. And I think that the, might be what happened, but mm-hmm. as a result, I don't like Lori. He comes across, like, kind of pushy because... Yeah. I think 
because the performance opposite him is just, just so lacking just that wall. you know so so yeah I, I don't blame him for that yeah and I think he did have good chemistry with Winona Ryder with Winona Ryder yeah, yeah. Uh, just not so much the woman even, he married. even his tutor I thought those yeah were Eric fun. Stoltz was um, uh, his tutor John Brooke uh, and here we get a little bit more Meg and and Mr. Brooke so you actually believe that romance yeah mm-hmm. and in in this one in 94 I really wish they would have had the bravery to say that Aunt Marge is a lesbian like, yeah like let's just not call her an old spinster yeah or or treat her like an old hag because she's not married let's just say let's just say she's she yeah i you, yeah totally whatever it is she's never. asexual she's yeah. lesbian because let me tell you whatever. something a woman um like aunt march with that much money she would have been married. If she wanted to be married at all, right. she would have been married. Right. Because, yeah, some guy's going to absolutely marry into money. It doesn't matter what she looks like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, she is coded. Very gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you, there's no way, even in 94, they were going to have that I much I know. Chance. I know. They didn't even do and that, that made, in 22. Makes me a little sad. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can imagine Eric Stoltz now. He, yeah. he would be the gender fluid one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it, you, this is very much stuck in the 1890s. And um, you can kind of wedge in some feminism. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's stuck in the, well, it's, yeah, 1860s, actually, because it's after the Civil War, so. Uh, well, and then we have the final one. The final one. 2022, Greta Gerwig. This one was nominated for several Academy Awards. Several. And I did not watch it until this week. Really? Yeah. Um, I actually saw this in it the was, theater. It was on my radar. I just didn't get around to it. Um, she changed... Well, each of the last three have been very linear in their tale. It starts at one point and ends at this... Greta Gerwig throws that out the window immediately. Yeah. Um, you're going back and forth in time. Yeah, it starts off with... With um, Aunt March and Amy on a on a in a carriage ride, right, passing Lori. No, it uh, it starts with uh, Joe selling a story. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. She's in yeah. New York and she sells sells a story. So, um, I think what she's doing with the time frame or the back and forth in time is like this is Joe writing the book. And she'll write this part, and you get to see that part, and you write this part, and you get to see that. So mm-hmm. it goes back and forth quite a bit. That makes sense. It does go back and forth quite a bit. And I think that that helps with the, keeping the attention span of the movie going, too. Yeah, because this is the longest the, one at two hours and 14 minutes. The pacing goes well. Mm-hmm. It keeps you interested. And again, there's there's further talk about the feminist ways. You know, there's a whole speech about... How Joe wishes she could be one of the powerful men, and Amy wishes she could be should shed could shed the womanhood mm-hmm. illusion, and yeah, Timothy Chalamet was um, also feminist. I feel yeah, uh, which we didn't we didn't get really we didn't hint get that from Lori. either any of the other Lorries. No, um, that he's a patron of the arts, yes, but not but that not step that. further. You get the. You get the feeling in each of these that Joe is right when she turns him down because you know that if they got married, he would want her in society. And that's not Joe. So this one is the one instance where I questioned that. Oh boy, this is this is the one <laughs> where I cried deeply. Really? Both with like with the whole uh, Lori telling Joe how he felt yeah. ultimately, which we all knew. In this one, this did a much better job of leading up to that. Yeah. In the other ones, they all said, you all know what I want to say, so I, just let me say it. But it was still like out of, kind of out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, in this one, you saw him pine. You saw him, Yeah. you know. 
I, you could really see is, where he was his pain. Yeah, and this is the only one where I was like, no, this Joe and this Lori, I think they'd they, be successful. They make sense. <laughs> they make yeah. sense. Oh um, my gosh! And then what else? When when Amy told him, no, I'm not. I've I've always been second fiddle to Joe. I'm not going to be. So- oh my god! I was like that. Yeah. Woo! I'll talk about Florence Pugh in a moment, but um, so here we have Shersha Ronan as Joe, um, and probably my favorite Joe, definitely my favorite Joe. Um, I think she nails it, even if she loses her, you know, slips into her accent occasionally. What are you gonna do? Um, I do too. <laughs> Emma Watson is Meg. Um, I had a hard time. Believing she... And I know Emma Watson is older than all of these other actresses, but she just didn't look it. But um, nor, nor was she true to Meg's character in any way, really. Um, I, I, I liked her as... I liked the fact that they got into how... How, harm, how hard it is being poor and having rich friends. Yeah. Yeah, I understood that struggle. Be- yeah, because you're introduced it to... It affected her marriage, or yeah, her, her relationship. You're introduced to Meg kind of negligently buying $50 worth of fabric. Reluctantly. Because she's kind of pressured into it by a rich friend. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, immediately regrets it because she can't buy a coat that her husband actually needs. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I do like that they added the bit... They they show how difficult it is sometimes. The buyer's remorse and yeah. then the peer pressure. But in the books and in the previous movies, it wasn't Meg succumbing to peer pressure. It was Meg living her vanity. Yeah, until she married John Brooke. Letting, I think he, Meg's a weird character. Because you'd think as the oldest, she'd be the one that they'd be pushing forward into society and saying, kind of, you know, marry well. Um, but she doesn't. Um, so, yeah, Emma Watson plays Meg far more subdued to me than the other versions. She plays her as a sweet yeah. person. And Meg, I'm sorry, Meg is not the sweet March sister. Yeah. So, that... They they tempered Meg quite a bit for this movie. Yeah. And you yeah. see a lot more of her because it's Emma Watson. It is an enjoyable performance yeah. and a way to write that character. Yeah, it's not a so it's I'm not, not a bad play. I enjoyed it. But the, I do have that criticism that Who played John in this one? Uh I don't believe I know his name. I can't remember if it's an a person that I recognize or um so yeah, I I, I didn't mind Meg. Um, okay, then we get to Amy and Beth, and I have a couple of issues. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's probably, that that's not, I know we disagree on at least one of them, but. Well, do you want to talk about Lori first? Oh, yeah, let's talk about Lori. Let's talk about Timothy Chalamet. Where's so, t- Timothy Chalamet um, comes on, of course, he's the neighbor, his, his uncle's been disowned, uh, He's just kind of schlumming it up in Concord, living next to the March sisters, hanging out with Joe, and he just appears at a dance in this one, right? What do you mean? No, they they meet him like like they meet him every time when they when they are walking. Okay, okay. outside and they see him coming out with with his with his tutor, okay. but but then. The dance scene, what you're talking about, is really when we see him drunk. Well, no, that's the... No, I'm talking about the one where he... Him and Joe dance behind the scenes. Oh! Um, uh, that's maybe the second the or t- third time we see him. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I thought maybe that's where he just showed up, and I'm like, how come I can't find this movie? <laughs> um, I can't. Well, I'll look it up later. So, yeah... Sorry, that was the the Little Women Atlanta season four. Yeah, that Wikipedia. was. I'm trying to find out who played Mr. Brooks, and I can't find the damn thing. Keep wrong, on the, wrong wiki. Wrong wiki. I'm on the wrong wiki. So I liked Timothy Chalamet as Lori. Oh, oh, I loved him. Um, and this is the first time I actually believed both relationships. Like, yeah, him and Joe, and him and Amy. I don't think any of the other ones 
I believe like Peter. I believe Peter Lawford and June Allison. I don't believe Peter Lawford and Elizabeth Taylor. I believe <laughs> Christian Bale and, and Winona Ryder. I don't believe Christian Bale and yeah. Samantha so the, this is the first time both sides kind of like yeah they play well off each other well. Yeah, I would agree with that. I I really just loved Timothy Chalamet's performance mm-hmm. so so very much. He's he was playful. Yeah. In the younger years, and then he was, you know, hopelessly romantic in young adulthood, and then more practical in adulthood. Like, it, it really just kind of showed an evolution of somebody in that age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he was probably my favorite Laurie. Yeah, mine too, for sure. Um, I can't even remember who played Beth. It's, it's a... Uh, an actress that I am not familiar um, with. Yeah, I'm not familiar with her either. I found this is probably my least favorite performance as a whole because she was just so bland. And yeah, I don't know was. whether they just cut Beth down to nothing to beef up Joe and Meg's parts, but she seems, she's very forgettable in this version. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm looking it up. Eliza Scanlon. Okay. Who played Mr. Brooks? Since you have the cast list up there. I'm loading it up now, but Laura Dern is Marmy, we should yeah. talk about. Yeah. James Norton. Okay. Okay. So, um, so yeah, Beth here is just so bland and forgettable. And I didn't really feel a whole lot when she died, because I, I felt more for Marmy than for <laughs> yeah absolutely oh my god that's another time that I cried <laughs> Marmy reacting to Beth's passing yeah, so and then but I didn't feel anything because Beth was gone because she just seemed very negligible in this movie she was there yeah the the piano teacher really that was the wholesome moment of this movie yeah is the piano teacher giving her the piano the piano yeah even though knowing she's not going to last very long so mm-hmm. but then we also had father march yeah and they beefed up his part you in the the other three versions he comes home and then that's the last Does you see know? of him Does he know? Yeah, yeah. Like, he comes home and they're all like daddy and then then hug him and then it's like okay he's gone again i guess he, he, right he's never mentioned Does, again <laughs> i guess they called him back to war <laughs> Can I dream that reading that page? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but here is Bob Odenkirk, so he has a much bigger part. Yes. And you and, just, and that's nice because I think he plays very well off Laura Dern, who plays Marmy. Absolutely. So if I get more of that and less Beth, I'm okay. But Beth, you're supposed to, like, be just <laughs> devastated. Just torn, torn apart by the Scarlet Fever. And, yeah. and here, I was like, oh, she went to sleep. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, that is how it happened. And Marmy is really, really sad that she had to take a nap right then. <laughs> it was just, you know, you don't get that. You know, I'm the cricket on the hearth. I never envisioned myself leaving anywhere. You don't get that from here because she's just, she's sick, and then she dies. Yep. They talk about the scarlet fever too much. Yeah, yeah. Which she contracted from the the, the Hummels. Um, <laughs> half of their kids die from the scarlet fever yeah, that she can it was that, a major it was yeah. a major thing back so then so it's and, uh, and it was more of a plot point to make sure we knew why Amy had to be sent away yeah cuz Amy was the only one who hadn't had it yeah but so Beth is just kind of here in this movie yeah and she then is. with Amy I like adult Amy I like Florence Pugh as adult Amy because she plays very well off of both Meryl Streep, who plays Aunt March, and Timothy Chalamet. I did not like her at all as young Amy because it, she is like an adult putting herself in pigtails and trying to act like a little girl. And it comes across as incredibly off-putting to me. She is playing dress-up, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, you do get her burning the manuscript here, and I I, I believed it even less here, just because it's like 
you're a grown woman. Why are you acting this bad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. You know what you're doing in this movie. Yeah. It just... I, I, this is one instance where I wish they had done a search and tried to find someone younger to play young Amy. But... The Academy I, disagreed with me because Florence Pugh was nominated for Best Supporting Actress. I thought she did amazing. As a child, as an adult, I loved her performance, uh, too. It, it it drug the movie down for me. She's my favorite Amy. Oh, uh, um, I'm going to... I'm going to go with one half of Amy from 94. <laughs> child Amy. Child Amy. That's my favorite Amy. Um, if you're talking as a complete performance, I... God, none of them. <laughs> It's a tough one. It's a tough. It's a tough. It's one. a tough role. Amy isn't exactly likable. No. And um, yeah. So it, it, that just drugged this one down for me quite a bit. And also, Greta Gerwig does this thing whenever somebody is writing a letter, they break the fourth wall and stare into the camera and read it to you, basically, or recite it. And I hated that. <laughs> I hated that every every time they'd just be sitting there staring at the camera. I'm like, okay, no. And the this camera slow me. pans in, yeah, in the dramatic room, yeah, with the one light on that person. <laughs> I didn't mind. I thought it was nice and I don't know, a little I didn't quirky. Like it. I um, at least the professor is closer in age to Joe in this one. So, oh yeah, uh, the hot Italian guy. <laughs> I, I might be mispronouncing his name. Louis or Louis? Garel? Oh, maybe he's French. G A R R E L. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, he's much younger in this one. He, uh, one would, he would even say age appropriate. Like, yeah. if, if you would were to attend a four year college, you could you, see you that see if, them both if the, you're a freshman, yeah. he might be senior. Yeah. Or not too far away from that. Yeah, so it didn't make me cringe nearly as much when him and Joe right. got together. Right. Or did they? Because <laughs> this is where where Greta Gerwig tries to, you know, insert the push feminism the, push the things. Envelope because a bit. Yeah. this is all Joe writing the story. And she gets into <clears throat> an argument with her you publisher. S- right. Because he's like write me the rest of the story and then make sure she's married at the end. The girls want to see... They want to see women, them married. Women want to read about other women getting married. Yeah. And she disagrees. And why can't she just be on her own? Yeah, and right. then there's more to it. She's she's negotiating She's royalties, negotiating royalties, um, keeping copyrights. Uh, this is all very much based on Louisa May Alcott, who wrote Little Women. And there's also a really nice scene of how they made books in 1860. And I really, that I found fascinating because it was a lengthy process, <laughs> which is why books were so dear. But, um, yeah, they show them make creating Little Women, the book Little Women. Mm-hmm. It was so, pretty. Yeah. Um, you get the feeling that... You get you get the feeling that the ending is tacked on. The, the whole running to the train station to catch Frederick before he leaves on the train and the whole party afterwards where everyone's happily married with children. Right. Um, is tacked on to appease a publisher. Mm-hmm. And I kind of liked that. And then there's there's also like just sort of an uh, a thoughtful look on Joe's face in that last scene. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what do you think is happening there? Um, that I I think it's mostly that she had to change her ending because I don't think Louisa May Alcott wanted Joe to be married Probably in not. Little Women. Probably not. It really. I it's think like, she really wanted her to be happily unmarried. Yeah. Um, when I say Professor Bear is a convenient German professor, that he com- in the book he comes across as very convenient. Um, <laughs> He's you in got, the right place at the right time. Right, right place, right time, and he feels inserted solely to marry Joe off mm-hmm. to someone her intellectual equal. Yeah, and... You, he shows up when she when she goes to study. Yeah, and when she she's feeling lonesome, she's wondering yeah. if she should maybe 
uh, have entertained the idea of being with Lori romantically. Yeah. So, Boom. <laughs> uh, that is also something I didn't really like in this one was that Joe, like, had second thoughts. I don't like the idea that Joe had second thoughts because I truly believe Joe and Lori would have been miserable. Even Timothy Chalamet and Shersha Ronan, uh, Joe and Lori, I think they eventually would have started. She would not have put up, put up with his drinking at no. all. And, I, and I don't even think that Amy would have, honestly. Probably es- not. Especially not at, <coughs> out in Sorry. public at, at the dances and things so like I that. Don't, yeah, I don't know. This, this was the... I didn't like the fact that she put the letter in because her and Lori had a mailbox where they would <coughs> give treats to each other or presents. Um, which I think shows up in three of the four. The, the mailbox. Um but she puts a letter in there saying she has second thoughts, and if he asked again, she'd say yes. And I think, I don't know if I like that. I liked it because it just seemed very real. She and then didn't the, act on it. And then, like, the very next day, Professor Baird shows up out of nowhere in Concord. Yeah. <coughs> and finds them. Yeah. Which, to me, is like, why are you here? In in this last version, there is absolutely no reason for him to be there. There is for every other version, because she sends him her manuscript. And he's the one who gets it published. And he's bringing her her book. Mm-hmm. This is the only version where that's not the case. He just shows up. <laughs> he just, well, he does decide to publish it for her. And bind but, it. But that's... No, that's her negotiating with her publisher. Oh, that's true. That's right. Okay. I'm sorry. Did she send him her manuscript in this one? No. I thought she sent it directly to her publisher. Right. Who then rejected it until his daughters loved it. I think in the fourth one, the the only writing of hers that they discuss is her Is her horror stories. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't understand why he suddenly was in Connecticut other or why he was suddenly in Concord other than, oh, Joe has to get married now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need the Christmas reunion. Also, can't I mean, Amy is now married to Lori. Can he not raise the marches out of genteel poverty? <laughs> Can, I mean, <laughs> You you have her sister scrounging for fifty dollars for silk. Meanwhile, Amy is wearing furs. It's it's like oh come on. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't think about it that hard. These are the things I think about when I watch. <laughs> I, I will say I didn't second guess. It, it had been a long time since I had seen the ninety four version, and there was there were some scenes in there that were very nineteen ninety four and made me go oh ow I don't like that but this is this one I didn't have any problem with other than Florence Pugh trying to play a 12 year old yeah yeah I think that's this was the most woke one for oh, sure oh definitely yeah for sure and that's what I expected too yeah it's Greta Gerwig yeah yeah so so let's do let's do a rundown of characters again favorite least favorite um favorite Joe um, Winona Ryder. Really? Uh, it's I don't like any of them. I don't like any of the Joes as a favorite. Um, I'm going Trisha Ronan. Okay. Um, least favorite Joe. Hepburn. Hepburn. <laughs> um, favorite Meg. <clears throat> well, that's a catch twenty two for me because yeah, I like how Emma. I like Emma Watson's Meg. But, but it's, it's not it's not the little women's Meg. I'm gonna still say Emma Watson because they just they just rewrote Meg yeah. for her and that's fine. And I'm gonna say Emma Watson too. Um least favorite Meg. Uh I'm gonna go with the thirty nine version or the thirty three version because I don't remember Meg at all. <coughs> Excuse me. At least with Trini Alvarado and Janet Lee I remember them. I don't remember. 49 was Janet Lee? Was Janet Lee. Okay, I'm going to say that one. Um, um, did I say favorite Meg? 
Yeah, we did Emma Watson. So, uh, favorite Beth. Oh, favorite Beth? Claire Danes. Claire Danes. Okay, least favorite Beth. <laughs> any, any of them. Any of the other ones. Any of, <laughs> any of the other ones. <laughs> but I'm going to go... Zero minus zero. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they're all kind of... Yeah, any of the other ones. Just leave it at that. Um, so, favorite Amy. Favorite Amy? Oh, Florence Pugh. <laughs> My favorite Amy is one half of <laughs> least favorite Amy. Least favorite Amy. Um, I'm going the Elizabeth first one, Taylor. 30, 33. Yeah, 30. I'm going Elizabeth Taylor in the 49 version. I did not like that at all. That was pretty bad, but... Favorite Marmy. Oh, Actually, Lord, you they're... know what? That's kind of silly because I don't remember Marmy from either of the first two versions at all. So, yeah, and I would say Laura Dern. I like Susan she, Sarandon, but Laura Dern has a warmth about her yeah, that is yeah. far more <clears throat> marmy-ish. Yeah, yes. So what's your worst version that we watched? Uh, the first one. Yeah, 33. 33. Yeah, same. And it was just so overdone with everything. And which one is your favorite? Oh, the, the 2022. The 2022? Yeah. By a very slight margin... I'm going 2022. I think uh, 94 has some really great points. Yeah, it does. Um, but I just, I like Shersha Ronan's Joe a little bit more. So, so there we go. So well, what about Lori? Oh, oh, Lori? oh my God. My favorite Lori is Timothy Chalamet. Okay. Yeah. We agree um, on that. And my second favorite Lori would probably be Peter Lawford. So 49. Yeah. The 49 yeah, version. I agree, would agree with that. Yeah. Um, no offense, Christian Bell, you're hot and all, but. Uh, yeah, I just I only liked half your performance. <laughs> I don't blame you. I know you. It was your partner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So should we roll for next time, um, or should we? No, do we're, what we're going gonna... to do prom night. Prom night. Oh, that makes sense. So, so next time you hear us, you we will be doing prom night. But happy holidays, everyone. We hope you have a wonderful, however, whatever you you celebrate. Yes, well said. I echo that. Thank you for listening. Bye.